Fans, please welcome my guest this time, the definition of technician, Chris Ty. Mr. Ty, we have just learned that your next opponent here in NHW is going to be the young up-and-comer, Santos. You know, let me tell you something. I built this promotion from the ground up. I was in the first ever New Heights Wrestling main event. And now I have to wrestle somebody who doesn't even deserve to be in the ring with me. I have to wrestle some new guy off the block who thinks he can just walk in here, not even shake my hand and give me the respect I deserve. I am disgusted by the way New Heights Wrestling is treating me, and I will not take it. Strong words from Chris Ty. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall. Here we go, Hoss Bryant. We've got this matchup here against uh, the former number one contender, Chris Ty, going toe-to-toe -to -to against Santos, the new and upcoming star here, trying to fight his way to the top. Oh, yawn, Santos. Hopefully Ty beats him in 30 seconds. Don't count the man out so quickly. He's got determination. I one, told you one, two, three. I counted him out. Few more Mississippi, maybe. Basically been on a losing streak here in New Heights Wrestling. Just seems to can't get the W since uh, losing to Lucha LaCora for the Pride Championship. Then he loses to Zane Stevens in a, I guess you'd call it a, a buy-in match, become the Pride Champion against C.B. Slade. So right now he's uh, he's at the bottom of the ladder. You're right, absolutely. Now if he would have pulled out a W there against uh, uh, against Zane Stevens, we would have seen Chris Ty going toe to toe against. Uh, C.B. Slade, the number one contender for the Pride Championship, but instead we see him going, going against Santos, a new member here at the New Heights Wrestling, but uh, I tell you what, I believe he's got the heart, he's got the determination to make it all the way. He's just not proving that right now. Because it's all about the here and now here at New Heights Wrestling, it's all about the here and now everywhere in this world, and uh, except for horseshoes. Except for horseshoes. Thanks for correcting me. You're right back to the bottom. Ben Parker is my new favorite commentator. <laughs> <laughs> Our referee for this match is going to be Danny, ladies and gentlemen. We gave this guy music. shows you how far Chris Ty has fallen. He has to go just being at the top tier of the Pride Division, right down to the bottom, to the guy that carries everybody's bag into the building, Santos. Now, let's give the guy credit where it's due. He's actually used to be an MMA fighter. He's being Mr. Nice Guy, shaking hands, kissing babies, blah, blah, blah. That's why the guy's a loser. If this guy was a real MMA fighter, would he just go nuts on people? Here we go, referee Danny calling for the bell. There we go. Here we go, we got Chris Ty and Santos gonna tie up here. Chris Ty, you can see he's he's not wanting to shake this hand of Santos. Santos is like, hey, let's start out clean, let's start out fair here. Chris is mad. Ty is mad. He is not happy to be in this ring against Santos tonight. But you can hear the, the chant of USA amongst the fans tonight. Santos definitely has a good fan following. He's a scrappy up-and-comer. And while he has not had any success, unfortunately, here in New Heights Wrestling, he is going to keep fighting until he gets it. And maybe that will come from Chris Ty this week on NHW Television. Santos, this guy has. Whoa, look at that! Santos right off the bat going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Chris Ty in a very, very scientific wrestling faction. Does Ben normally ignore you? I try to. <laughs> he kind of makes his presence know whether I want to know he's there or not. Here we go. Chris trying to break that one. Chris Ty. 
trying for maybe a clover leaf or no. Here we go. What are we going for an ankle lock, it looks like. Oh, Ty with the single leg takedown. Reversal. Into a side headlock. Chris Ty now, wrenching in the side headlock, but obviously Santos coming back up to his feet here. Wrenching it again is, uh, is Chris Ty. Santos is deceptively is. strong for his size. Oh, but look, here we go, trying to reverse it, trying. Oh, Chris is, oh, oh. oh just that thing in. Why is it going this long? Why is it Chris Ty just hit his move already? Hit sudden impact. Call it a day. We're not getting paid by the hour here. I, I told you, let's not count the guy out so quickly. At least a few more Mississippi. Oh! Wow. Double shoulder block and both of them still standing. Santos, you know, Santos, has, all of his matches to date have been against Giants. He's been in the ring with Paul Jordan. He's been in the ring with Waylon Barley. He's been in the ring, ring with Lane Smart. Now he's got someone his own size. And I think that confidence level in Santos has just skyrocketed. I truly think he has gone in this match believing he has a chance of winning. And the kid deserves it, you know. He has been in the ring with all those giants. He has gotten the tar beat out of them. But he keeps coming back for more. He shows that heart, that fighting spirit. And right now he's just being choked down in the corner by Chris Ty. Blatant choke. The referee should have been way faster on top of Chris Ty God, rather than letting him. The referee can take his time on it. He could have, you know, said one Mississippi. Well, I would hope that no referee would ever count that slow on a choke. Referee calling for the rope break here. He, Chris Ty has uh, Santos in the ropes there. Had him in a cravat in the corner. That's actually a pretty uh, European wrestling hold. <laughs> Just kick kicks him right in the thigh. thigh. Yep. Another one. He, you know, if you look, if you can see from here, you know, Santos has on those those shorter trunks. He has very very thick legs. So that means he has a great base. And for Chris Ty to target those legs and take him out is going to take away that basing that Santos has. And that could lead to an unfortunate defeat, which even more unfortunately he is no stranger to during his tenure here at NHW <laughs> as Ty just rocks Santos with that shot to the head. If we can get Parker off his drumsticks for just a minute, you can obviously tell that Chris Ty is rocking this kid. And this kid's MMA, then why is he not using his full potential here in New Heights Wrestling? Why is, I would do the exact same thing. I hope he goes purple. Pass out, kid. Come on. Because this is professional wrestling, this is not mixed martial arts, so he's not going to use those mixed martial arts talents of his to try and win a professional wrestling match. He's going to go win it on an even ground with just about anybody. So he doesn't win. Is that right, Bulls? Perhaps, perhaps he's doing that wrong. If he's not using his MMA, his MMA training, perhaps he needs to start using his MMA training. That could get him an upper leg here against Chris Ty. Exactly. Chris Ty just hit a huge side of suplex. I want Santos, or Santos, or Santos. How do you say it? I have no comment to that because that just sounded horribly wrong. Chris Ty with Santos. Santos catching Ty with repeated right and left shots to the midsection. Now moves up to the head. Irish whip taking Ty. No reversal. Santos into the ropes. <laughs> Knee he lift. Right in the midsection. <laughs> that was a huge kitchen sink. With two faucets. Two faucets, guys. Some double-sided sink, two faucets. <laughs> probably even a farm kitchen sink. Exactly. Enough to make your mama happy. Here we go. <laughs> Whoa, look at this. Look at this. Got like a surfboard maneuver using that middle rub to, to, uh, to angle the back there. Wouldn't make my mom happy. She doesn't like to cook. <laughs> you, had, you were one of those TV dinner kids, weren't you? No, I had other people who liked to cook. I had grandparent cooking when I was a kid. Mom and daddy didn't love him, obviously. Let's get back to the action because I don't want to hear Ben Barker spill his beans on live television. <laughs> Speaking of beans, here we go. Chris Ty now rocking Santos. Speaking of beans, what was I'm beans on the other side? <laughs> Again, oh, the counter! Oh, there we go, Ben! Ben, one, two! Only oh, two! Oh, no, wait a minute, Santos! Ty is mad. Ty is frustrated. He is upset. He just took the head off of Santos. That crowd is going to get to Chris Ty faster and faster. The more they chant USA, that could take him off of his game and could lead to Santos finally getting that elusive win here in NHW. Ty up to the middle turnbuckle. 
Here we go. Oh. Big elbow drop right to the chest and head. As much as I hate to say, this has actually been a pretty good showing by Santos. As is exactly what I said, you know, he's gone into this match seeing that he's not against a giant. He's not against someone who's six foot eight. He's not against someone who's 300 plus pounds. Here comes. Sadly. Oh, there's that knee smash. I don't think he got all of it. I think he actually drug his uh, upper part of his tibia against the back of his head. Usually whenever Chris High hits that move, he drives the opponent's skull to the mat. Two count only, repeated two counts. But he's making Santos use that energy. And there goes the USA chance. Those fans are solidly behind Santos. Can I point something out? Once again, these fans chant USA like they did last time in the past episodes. Chris Ty is Canadian. Santos is Brazilian. There's not an American. He hailed us for shooting for Danny. Danny, Danny. Santos Danny. has moved. Oh! To, uh, according to my notes, Santos has moved to Gulf Shores, Alabama. So that is part of the United States of America. As he hits those repeated Germans. Belly not, and suplex here. We've got Chris Todd. It's not something we see very often in professional wrestling anymore. Oh, he counters. Counters again. Here we go now. He's trying to break that waist lock. Goes around. Oh! I see how you feel now, Chris. Uh, Haas. I tell you what. It's Haas. I got confused there. This is the first time I got into speaking in about 15 minutes. Think Here we go. Out of the competition. Who can speak faster? I believe I can do it. No, it's who can put Haas out of a job faster. <laughs> hey, boys, let's, let's you and me just take it off and get Haas out of the commentary booth. I must say, I quite enjoy Haas's uh, take on, uh, on the matches. His takes are always biased and skewed and usually are motivated by himself. Santos catching Chris Ty. He dropped it. That was incredibly impressive by Santos. He looks like he is gunning. He is tasting that elusive first win. Chris Ty needs to slap the taste out of his mouth because this has gone on too long. Chris Ty needs to step up. Did he up with Nelson? Chris Ty kicking out kick the face. Is he going counters out of it again? Is it? Is this a full Nelson? Is this full Nelson camel clutch? Oh my! I have not seen Nelson that in a while. Might have. He has got that devastating full Nelson clutch. Oh, good ring positioning there by, 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 by Santos. Oh, but look at there! Look at there! The very the finish there by by Chris Ty is able to get the no on that bottom turnbuckle rope. Santos unfortunately think he got that win. That distraction is not going to help him. Ty is at his feet. Santos turn around. Sun impact. This is over. Good riddance. Good night, Irene. Here is the Oh, poor Santos. He almost had that first win he's been after for months. Chris Ty I let that go on for too long. That shouldn't have went that long. Chris Ty should have put him away a whole lot sooner. Doesn't matter if he was wrestling a monster, boys. He should have done a whole lot sooner. I believe Chris Ty just came into this matchup not as prepared as he should have been. He counted Santos out way too quickly, just like we've been doing. But I tell you what, Santos gave it his all. But Chris Ty, like you said, on at a W here on New Heights Wrestling Television. I have to give Devil his due because obviously Mike Mason's been training this kid because he hit a boy to boy. Obviously Nelson and I just got a problem with this kid because the fact they hit a full Nelson. Obviously people are going by my back, training this kid with him, she throwing his bags out the street. Santos has a bright future in professional wrestling in this sport. So for for guys like Nelson Eisner and Mike Faze, I don't know if they did or did not, but if they are helping this kid, they are helping to train the future of this sport. And I salute whoever is helping him because he has shown vast improvement. And I do believe that pretty soon we will see Santos get a win in that column and his record will start improving.
Here we go. Great showing there by Santos, newcomer to the New Heights Wrestling, really giving it his all in this matchup tonight, going toe-to-toe -to -toe against Chris Ty, former number one contender for the Pride Championship at New Heights Wrestling. Fans, don't forget to visit us at newheightswrestling.com. Uh, uh, make sure to join us at a location near you. Tag Team Champion right here in NHW. Billy Ray's forget where his belt was. Oh, I get it, he's not boastful, he's, he's quite humble. Humble indeed, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be joined shortly here again by the voice of NHW, Ben Parker. Here we go, we've got the referee ready to start this matchup. Checking, checking Mr. Ray's. He's already checked Mr. Jordan. Here we go. I'm anxious to see this one, in fact. Now, in the past, I don't, I don't believe any of these ever got a chance to air on television, but in the past, Billy's brother, Scotty, did take on Paul Jordan on a number of occasions for the heavyweight championship. Scotty was unfortunately unsuccessful in those attempts, but they proved to be some great professional wrestling matches, true testaments to these two in our sport. So we'll see what Billy Rays can do against Paul Jordan this time around on New Heights Wrestling. Oh no. You know this isn't going to be pretty. Paul Jordan evident, uh, obviously, with the height advantage, the weight advantage. Uh, Billy Ray's wanting to start this matchup off with perhaps a collar elbow tie up, but Paul Jordan just reached out, grabbed his wrist, and said, Let's go to work, man. I'm tired of playing around here. Billy Ray is apparently trying to wrestle Paul Jordan. And Paul Jordan is just countering everything because of that size and that strength advantage. Perhaps trying for a hurricane rod there. We'll never know. Paul Jordan threw Billy Ray's clear across the ring, Haas. And Paul Jordan is no joke. We've seen this man attempt a 450 splash. This guy can just do about anything that he wants. 450 splashes, wrestling fans, or something you see someone the size of Billy Ray's do. Not Paul Jordan. So even me, and I am admittedly not the biggest fan of Paul Jordan. Even I was impressed to see him perform a 450 splash. Billy Ray's with the roll through. Hooks him up and a head scissor takeover brings Paul Jordan down to the mat. I'm going to tell Paul you said you're not the biggest fan. Why are you not the biggest fan? You've got to give it to him. Look at him. He, he is, he is experienced. Mr. Mr. Boyles, Mr. Boyles, I'm just going to cut you off. Have you seen the unmitigated disrespect and hatred that man has shown to me every single week on this television program. If you have not, you have no room to comment. This Big man right to the gives me absolute heck. He catches him. Oh wait, 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 what are we doing? Hoist him back up, looking possibly for a power bomb. Drops him out the back. And Billy Ray's creates that separation. Billy Ray's has to basically perform some guerrilla warfare tactics here. He needs to get in there, he needs to attack Paul Jordan, and he needs to get away before Paul Jordan can hit something big and powerful on him. As Billy Ray's rolls through against the clothesline, jumps over the corner dive. Oh! Billy Ray's misses with the moonsault. Paul Jordan with Billy Ray's uh, Irish to the other side. Oh. Flying back elbow, taking Ray's off of his feet. Billy Ray's trying to catch a breather here to the outside, as you can see. Oh, but look at this, Paul Jordan with him draped over that middle rope, choking him. Using those illegal tactics. Paul, are you having a sip of water over there, buddy? How is it illegal? He's using the ring as a weapon. That's what it's there for. If, if, uh, if <laughs> it's still, it can still lead to him being disqualified, and he doesn't oh, care. He, did. he gets disqualified. Remember, Paul Jordan has that rematch. Eventually, he will challenge Mike Faison for the heavyweight championship. And going into that match with just, with losses, no matter how they go. And that was obviously know, not a tap out. Well, I, you know, I would have tapped out if I would have been in that maneuver. He's got the arm barred. He's got the chin reached around to the other side. Hey, That's why you are not a professional wrestler, good sir. As Paul Jordan just drills his boot right into the face of Billy Ray's. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Ben Parker saying that he welcomed Paul Jordan to put him in that maneuver as well. 
I would tap out like a baby. I will not. I will be man enough to admit it. I would tap out immediately. I may be beaten, but I would have run very, very fast. I think. I think I could run faster than you. What a sidewalk slam! Paul Jordan jumped like an extra two or three feet into the air to hit that move. I mean, he's already six foot, eight inches tall. So basically, Billy Ray's had a good four to five foot drop right there, and Paul Jordan just jumped straight up another two or three feet to drill with that sidewalk slam. That was, again, as much as I hate to admit it, impressive. Oh. Straight jacket suplex. He had the arms crossed right across the chest. Billy Ray is, is being dismantled by Paul Jordan. Come on, Billy. Get back into this fight. Look at you, you're so one-sided, you're cheering for Billy Rays. I am cheering for Billy Rays. I've told you before, Paul Jordan does not like me, and by golly, I do not like Paul Jordan. By golly, that was a statement picked up from his grandmother. Here we go, we've got Paul Jordan now with Billy Rays on the outside. Oh, look, there's a kick to the side of the hand of uh, Jordan. Billy Rays now using the rope slingshot. Hey, powerbomb right in the middle of the mat. Was that three? That was two. It was two. Two count. Two count. Two. Referee is set. No, he's calling for the bell. Calling for the bell. You could have fooled me. I thought it was two. Referee says it's three. Paul Jordan, either way, he gets the win. I think even Paul Jordan was surprised, but if you really think about it, that could be considered sending a message. Because that is the exact same move that Mr. Handelbaum, Mike Faison, used to defeat Paul Jordan for the heavyweight championship. That big sit-out power bomb. At the end of the day, the referee is the one who calls the match. I mean, he's the one that counted his shoulders down to three. I don't think he's finished. I don't think he's finished. Paul Jordan now with Billy Ray. The referee, oh, the referee could end up reversing his decision at this rate. This match might still go to Billy Ray's. Billy Ray's with the fight! The referee may just throw this match out completely. They're both still going at it. Obviously, these two men need to be locked to the cage. They need to be allowed to go at it. The referee needs to step in. This match is over. Something bad is going to happen. Especially when it comes to Paul Jordan, this man is vicious, he's calculated. I would, the referee needs to step in. Oh, it's God. kind of you to worry about the, the health of Billy Ray. What a power slam by Paul Jordan. How the referee has not reversed his decision yet is beyond me. He is still trying to keep Paul Jordan off of Billy Ray's. If I were the referee, I would just stay out of the way of Paul Jordan. That's just my opinion. Parting because of, Paul is mad. Parting of the senses. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if it weren't already over, it would be over right now. There would be a pin. There would be a one, two, three, four, five, six. You could count until 20. Oh, he's going to go for that power bomb again. He's again sending a message to Mike Mason. Jordan is making a statement. He wants that heavyweight championship back. I would not want to be Mike Mason right now. You're looking too far ahead. I would not want to be Billy Ray's right now. Fireman's scary. It's going to be Parting of the Senses, part two. We need more referees. We need security out here. Billy Ray's is convulsing in the middle of the ring. No. Referee finally getting in between Billy Ray's and Paul Jordan, trying to take this match and let it let it stop. This, I think referee's day late and a dollar short. Oh, watch it, watch it, watch it. Referee! Paul Jordan is definitely going to be fined for that. 
He scoops him up again. Looks like he's going to go for a running power slam this time. Oh, uh, I don't know. Oh, 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 oh. Get down. Everybody's down except Paul Jordan. I guess that's just saying that he is ready to rise to the occasion and challenge once again for the heavyweight championship of New Heights Wrestling. You know what? I like it. The man's sinking to new lows. He's got to he's got to find himself all over again. How do you come over a 627 day title reign? How do you find yourself all over again? Sometimes you have to walk through the valley just to find yourself. But on the other hand, Paul Jordania is going to be massively fine for touching the HW official. And he's going back to the Scotty Rays. Somebody needs to step in. I don't even know whether it was like half a sleeper, half a choke slam. Oh, kick the rep again. Oh, it's David Senior. David Senior coming out here. This guy is so awesome. And I like it. He's lost it. Absolutely. He's mad. He's angry. Mr. Boyles, do you understand now why I do not like Paul Jordan? I understand. He's washing his hands clean. Go ahead. Just because he says he's washing them clean doesn't mean that they are in any way, shape, or form clean. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You've seen it first on New Heights Wrestling Television. Paul Jordan, Wei Lang, putting waste to an official, putting waste to Billy Ray's. I, Hoss Bryant, condone these actions. You would. They haven't been on the same page for quite a while. It seems as though these two are always in each other's hairs. A lot of the blame can go to T-Bird because he's, there was a point in time where he had missed a couple months and Cal had it on his own. But here recently, they've had their troubles. And it's kind of blowing my mind that these two are slapping hands and kissing babies. I don't know what happened to the last time I saw these guys, but it seems as though they regained some type of chemistry. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to agree with you here or not, but but these two guys, when they were coming out shaking the hands of the fans here, they were getting in each other's well matchup tonight. That was a good call. I actually catch that. We've got the Cali kid, the California kid, T-Bird, against the, uh, the Showgunners, ladies and gentlemen. Got the Jiu-Jitsu master Shane Gibson, and the man who had actually exudes zero emotion. I heard when his baby was born, he just rolled his eyes. This man, really? This guy has absolutely zero emotion. And you have Shane Gibson. This man is, is full of charisma. He's a charismatiz, as I like to call him. This guy can kick you from anywhere. This guy can kick you from anywhere. He's got educated feet, and it's, this is actually going to be a good match because these two actually have history. Uh, they've actually competed in the past, but this isn't the first time here on New Heights Wrestling Television these, these two teams have competed. So I'm kind of interested to see how this team, the Heartbreakers, Cali Kid and T-Bird, can actually uh, coexist as they take on the Showgunners. And welcome back our friend Ben Parker here to the commentation station. What do you uh, think, buddy? It seems like... Uh, it looks like they're back on the same page, doesn't it? I'm a little baffled. I know. The last time we saw the Cali Kid and T-Bird in the ring together, they, they were about to come to blows. They were about to just beat each other to a bloody pulp. And now... And now, they're, it looks like they're back on the same page. Have you ever heard of the word charismatize? Because uh, our friend here just used that. Charismatize? Charismatize. Uh, can you use it in a sentence? 
Hosh Bryant is so awesome, he is a charismatic. Can I have a definition, please? Here we go. California kid on his back in the center of the ring, working his way back to his feet, however. Charismatic is when you're so charismatic, you just exceed that level of charisma. It's like you're in the heavens of charisma. When he said it, I just thought about a little spinning top. I don't know. Here we go. It's such an odd word, but Hoss Bryant is such an odd man. As we see Kelly Kidd counter the rear waist lock into a... Uh, That's an armbar. Armbar, yes. <laughs> Sorry, a little under the weather t uh, this week. Or well, we help you feel better. Not me. Hoss Bryant saying he is 110%. He is ready to get in that in that ring if you give him the opportunity. I, I guess it's all that water he drinks when things happen that he should see that he somehow misses. He's actually got him in a rear naked choke. Uh, There's quite a little bit of an MMA move. Cali Kid works himself up to his feet. And a snap air takeover. Straight to a rear chin lock. And that's a side headlock. I apologize. Side hot lock there by Cali Kid. Cali Shane Kid's eyes make my eyes hurt. They're just so sparkly. That's not where Cali Kid wants to be. Although the good thing is that Shane Gibson and Dunham are not competitors who break the rules. The t bird so, getting in but Yeah, why is t bird coming in? I mean, oh, meeting of the minds as Dunham delivers a double noggin knocker and a double knee strike right in the face with a double clothesline over the road. Well, at least one of them did. t bird got hung up. That is some unity by the Shogunners. And this week on the $1,000 trivia for New Heights Wrestling, who is the legal man? Good question. Can I phone a friend? I think it's Cali Kid, but we'll we'll wait and see what our Cali Kid was says. the last person who was legal man. Yeah, Cali Kid did not make the tag. Dunham did receive a tag from Shane Gibson. As Cali, oh, oh! he kicked his opponent. He, he kicked his partner, T Bird. Now, obviously, that was 100% inadvertent. Dunham is so strong, he just threw Cali Kid around like he was a rash. Did you see the elevation? Wow. Any, any type of violence that Cali Kid exudes on T-Bird is 100%. It's two count. It's, <laughs> it's, it's deserving. Let's just say that. Now, you know as well as I do, Haas, that that was completely accidental. Cali Kid did not mean to drill his knee into the stomach of T-Bird. Oh, oh, my! I'll sign Jonathan up for one of those. I believe uh, Dunham hurt his hand there. And Kelly Wright is exploding. Another and backhand chop. Down goes Kelly Kidd. We'll never know if it actually hurt because he doesn't do the motion. What, what do you like to call Dunham Haas? Face of stone, something like that. <laughs> exactly. He's almost in the lights. Those are expensive lights, Dunham. Big stalling vertical suplex goes for the cover. Somewhat nonchalant. He doesn't have all that weight across the body. Cali Kid easily kicks it too. So the question is, can these two actually? You believe that Cali Kid and T Bird can actually come together with all the problems they've had and actually make this work? Ben, that question was to you. I, I think there's always a possibility. You know, it's really hard to break a true friendship. And these guys have been friends for a long time. Gibson now in the ring with Cali Kid. Got him in a side headlock here. Cali Kid trying to get the fans behind him, but I'm not sure if the fans are really. Here we go, take over. Cali Kid goes down to the canvas. Referee Daniel there to make sure that his shoulders are not on that on the canvas there. And if I was Shogun Shane Gibson, whenever he had his foot forward and I was Cali Kid, I would have dumped him on the back of his head. Wrestling 101, guys. I missed that day of training, but I'm glad you caught us up on that one. Here we go. Wait, you had any training? More than you. Right? Let's spray it. Here we go. T-Bird in the ring. Irish whip. Off the other side. Gibson Close ducks. The clothesline. There's that spinning heel kick he loves to use. Beautifully executed. Goes for the cover. One, two. One. Oh, I didn't even get to the two. Almost. T-Bird finally gets some action in this match as he delivers those martial arts kicks right to Shane Gibson. Shane Gibson is used to giving those kind of kicks. 
And a big corner splash. Going for the Bulldog. And he throws Shane Gibson face first to the mat. Goes for the cover. Only two. Two count only. Gibson now being pulled up there by T-Bird. Cali Kid wanting a tag. There's a tag on the other side. That was a nice little tag. One of, them, one of them slapping each other across the face, at least. And there we go, calf kick. Catching Gibson. Huge calf kick. Huge calf kick. That was beautiful. Two count only. Gibson able to get the shoulder up off the canvas. Now Cali Kid pulling Gibson up by the hair. Big right hand has him, has him dazed in the corner. There's another quick but That was a closed fist, and the referee, you saw, admonished him a little bit for it. Trying a little tag team work here. Team. What is this? Oh! <laughs> Gibson! Oh! Bulldog, clothesline. Gibson takes them both down with one strike. Did you see the meeting of the minds? That was... I didn't see a meeting of the minds, but I saw some uh, crashing and burning. Nice little train wreck there. <laughs> Referee with a mandatory 10 count. If, uh, if Gibson's not able to get up and Kelly Kidd's not able to get up, here we're gonna have a draw. Neither man, neither party. I don't think the referee is gonna end an exciting match like this on a draw. But here's the tag to Dunham. Comes in, big clothesline. And another big clothesline. He is just straight hooking them. What's he gonna go for here? Uh oh, T Bird. Oh, way slam right onto the partner of the Cali Kid. Those two just crashed into each other. When's the referee gonna throw one of these guys out of the ring? Haas, like I was telling you, these two guys, like we saw when they were coming in and uh, shaking hands with the fans, they had been in each other's way this entire matchup. I will agree with you on that one. There's that windmill kick! Who's legal? There's a pin. I'm not sure. The I don't think, oh! Freeze play out T-Bird. the legal man. Brilliant. Brilliant officiating. Finally, a referee can call it down the middle. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Here we go. Now... Oh, that could cost Dunham and Gibson. This is the kick. Oh. Kelly kick. Down he goes. He's telling T-Bird to go up top. This is the most cohesion we've seen out of these two in months. T-Bird pose. Here we go. There's the swan bomb. Cover. Three cap. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, our winners, T-Bird and Kelly Kidd. Here are your winners, the team of the California Kid and T-Bird. I'm a little baffled. That is the most unity we have seen from these two in months. They have finally gotten to what happens when we're on the same page. Uh, at, the out, uh, at the outset of this match, I would have picked Show Gutters. I'll just say that. I would pick Halle Kidd to kick T-Bird right in the face. Maybe we'll see that in just a second. But that is absolutely beautiful sportsmanship. Halle Kidd and T-Bird being gracious missed. winners. I'm so sick of this. The Show Gutters being good That's losers the about it. Like with home football, when guys used to punch each other in the face after the game was over. What is all this huggy huggy stuff? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my guests at this time, the California Kid and T-Bird, the Heartbreakers. Guys, we saw you take on and admittedly surprisingly defeat Shogun Shane Gibson and Dunham in tag team competition. Now, after recent weeks with bad blood and animosity between you, it looked like the Heartbreakers were done, but does this put you guys back on the same page and possibly put the Heartbreakers back in line for the tag team championships? Well, the way I look at it, Ben, with that victory, we secured the fact that we're back on the same page. Not only the same page, but let me tell you something, the same book. Tell them about it, Bird. We're reading the same book indeed. We won, we got our victory, that put us back where we needed to be, and, and it seems to me like, um, I, I don't know why you were so surprised of our victory. We've beat I mean, I know bigger we've opponents. I have won one in a while, Ben, but you know, surprising by the heartbreakers? I mean, we've won a few in our day. We are former tag team champions, and guess what? We're going to be right back there because we're going to stay on that same page. Heartbreakers are here to stay. Just like that.